Hey everybody, welcome inside the, of course, redesigned State Champ Sports Network studios here on the campus of Lawrence Technological University. My name is Lauren Plant. I am joined by the coach, Canton's former head coach, coached there for 20 years, over 200 wins. I mentioned on the TV show side that uh, he's a member of three Hall of Fame, so it's the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame, the Michigan High School Coaches Hall of Fame, and he is a Canton Hall of Famer, so I happen to MC the Canton Hall of Fame Awards and was happy to give this man the award. Thank you, Coach, for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, now I know that uh, Canton has not been your only coaching assignment. You actually had a career before that, and uh, I'm sure you played in one, at one day. So if you can tell me just kind of where you grew up, what high school you went to, how you got so involved with football, and maybe where you were before Canton. I grew up in White Pigeon, Michigan, over in the southwest side of the state. Uh, we were the Chiefs. Uh, believe it or not, I was a quarterback. <laughs> okay. 80 pounds ago um, and then played uh, tight end at Adrian College started there for three years played for Ron Labadee uh, we had a great run there and then I was a 29 year uh, long coach at uh, for the Michigan high school level three years in as assistant coach and 26 years as a, a head coach um, I started at Hudson High School in 1992 was there for five years spent one quick year at Dexter and then spent the last 20 years at Canton High School. All three were big rebuild jobs. Uh, the only place we could go was up. They were perfect jobs for me to take over and uh, loved it. He was always super generous with state champs, allowing us to come in and you know capture some of his pre-games and things of that nature. Uh, did have a lot of success. Uh, 17 out of 20 years they made the playoffs, 11 division championships, eight league championships, nine district titles, three regional crowns, Lost to Rockford in the 2005 state finals, but did get his team there. Actually coached his son, who is now currently playing football at Hope College for Peter Sturzma. So uh, here he is now uh, having a little bit of free time and uh, able to help uh, us build our Anvil Award competition. We started this last year where we wanted to recognize the top defensive and offensive linemen slash linebackers. Coach is gonna help us all season long. He's gonna break down guys as well as uh, kind of consult with a little coaching consortium he has of his own on guys that uh, maybe we should uh, put into the competition. Maybe some guys maybe who uh, either are injured or, or just you know fall out of the top 10 uh, but can play their way back in. That's kind of how it works, very much like uh, our Mr. Football competition. We've got two guys that we want to talk about this week. Two guys, two teams that happen to be going up against each other uh, this weekend to open the season. So uh, why don't we start with uh, the very, very talented uh, lineman out of Oak Park, Justin Rogers, uh, one of the most uh, highly recruited players really in the nation right now, and for good reason, because he does it pretty well on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you know, watching his highlight tape from uh, his junior year, I mean, he's the size 6'3", three, uh, uh, 311 pounds, committed to Kentucky. This kid's more than just a lineman. He played a defensive end, he played a linebacker for him. He moves very well, so he's a football player. He's not just a lineman uh, solely, uh, but when he does line up an offensive tackle, uh, he mauls people. Just in what you've seen, what do you believe maybe are, are um, his strengths? At 6'3", at that level, usually they want those big, thick, barrel-chested guys to play at guard or center, and I usually want your longer 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guys to long arms to play tackle uh, for pass blocking purposes. So um, in 6'3", he'd be a great nose guard or a three technique, uh, be a tough kid to move out of the middle. Yeah, well, when he is playing offensive line in the game against West Bloomfield this weekend, he's gonna have a linebacker he's gonna have to deal with, and that is Cornell Wheeler, who is a Michigan commit. What can you say about him? Uh, he's 6'1", 222, but I, I tell you what, he runs like he weighs 170 pounds. That kid can fly. Uh, literally, against spread, you watch his film, he's lined up in the middle and he's making plays on that sideline, on that sideline. He gets to the ball, and when he gets there, he brings it. Uh, he's a great tackler. Yeah. As a coach, how excited do you get about having a player of this caliber on the defensive side of the ball for you? You are so lucky because he can make up for mistakes from kids that are in front of him, behind him. 
Um, that kind of kid uh, makes you look smart. He's so quick, you watch film and he just avoids blockers or runs past blockers. So, you know, besides those two guys in front of him having to do their job, I think he's going to be fine. All right, well, we're going to talk about two guys each and every week here on the Amble Report. And uh, Coach Beckler is going to be with us all season long. If you have some comments or, or, you know, players that you think we need to put on our radar, you certainly can reach out to us. You can direct message us on Twitter, maybe make a Facebook comment to this video. Uh, you can email us. Just go to the contact page at statechampsnetwork.com. And please go to the website because that is where you vote for these guys. The one great thing, like our Mr. Football Award, is we're the only major award in the state where the fans actually can participate and have a say in who stays in the competition. The guy who has the most votes, who's leading the vote count, can never be removed out of our top 10, no matter what Coach Beckler says. We got to get this guy off the list. He's staying in until the fans put somebody else above him. So he also, if he wins the online vote, has an automatic entry into our Final Four and has a 20% advantage to win the whole thing. So it's not everything, but it means a lot if you can win the vote. And uh, so go to our website, vote and vote often. We will give you another update next week. We'll talk about this matchup a little bit and, uh, and a lot more. So make sure you join us. Thanks for watching.